Hi, welcome back. Um, I am here to bring you another pattern. Um, I've been working on this pattern for a little while because it takes a little bit while to film. Um, and I'm also like a little bit sick. So I'm trying to make sure that I edit out all of like the sniffles and, and stuff like that. <clears throat> and the coughs and stuff, but um, I still wanted to do it anyways because I was procrastinating it a lot and I knew it had to get done. But this is a big project. I'm trying to hide it so you can't see it. So I can do a big reveal. But actually you could probably... <laughs> You already know what it is. I'm not sure why I'm trying to hide it. I am here to bring you the Lazy Daisy Amigurumi pattern. I don't know. I, I struggled with figuring out a name for this cutie, but I think I just went, I need to go generic and just Lazy Daisy. Um, this is the version that I created. I used orange petals for this one. Um, but some of you may have seen my Instagram post in which I have almost like a pink petal one, which is this one. And this one is a whole lot bigger than this one. I was playing around with um, tension on this one. So these are the exact same yarn, exact same hook, exact same pattern, except this one, I decided to go quite tight with my stitching. And then this one, I went like normal with my stitching just to kind of figure out what I liked. But you can see that like you can get quite big just with tension. So, well, you know, these kind of look like the same color, but I swear they are different. They look both orange, but this one's more pink, I swear. Um, but anyways, um, this pattern is, I don't, I always struggle with rating where my patterns fall in terms of difficulty. So, I want to rate it at a medium or an intermediate difficulty just because it requires a lot of sewing. But if you're comfortable with sewing, like this is all single crochet, like single crochet increases and decreases. And then there's only a little bit of back loop only, which I explain in the pattern. So if you're feeling adventurous as a beginner, I bet you can do this. It's not that hard. It's really not. Uh, you just have to be patient with yourself because it takes quite a while because it's a big pattern. It's a big, it's a big plushie. So it's a lot of stitches, but I think you can do it. This pattern does not teach you like all of the stitches. So you still need to know how to single crochet. I'm not going to teach you how to single crochet, but I don't think that necessarily means that it's not a beginner pattern. It's just that I'm not gonna teach you the single crochet. Does that make sense? So this pattern is worked like within the round. Um, I pretty much start with like a circular start um, using like a chain two and single crochet and second chain from hook method for almost all of the starts. You can use a magic circle, but with the plushy and fluffy yarn, I just, it just works better with the chain two. Like, trust me, I am a magic circle kind of girl, but like this, it just works better and <laughs> trust me it just works better but if you want to do a magic circle start totally fine you can do that another thing a lot of people ask me like i don't have that yarn what's a good yarn substitution you can use any yarn so just like how i said like this is the same pattern but this one turned out smaller you can use any yarn you could literally just use size 4 yarn with, I use a 3.0 millimeter hook with size four yarn. You could use that for this pattern. Like this is the great thing about Amigurumi is that you don't really need a lot of, I don't know, changes to a pattern for Amigurumi. I mean, it might be a little bit different, but like with this, it's gonna be about the same. I, I think you can definitely just translate it to like a smaller yarn, no problem. And then last but not least, I always put the, the pattern in the description, but I also upload it on Ribbler. So you can t check out um, my shop on Ribbler where the pattern's completely free over there. If you prefer to like use the written pattern along with the video, you can totally do that. So hopefully you guys liked my little blabbering and um, let's get started into the pattern. These are the main yarn yarns. 
whatever. <laughs> this, this is the main yarn that we're gonna be using and it is called Sweet Snuggles Light. They have a version that's slightly bigger called Sweet Snuggles. I just prefer the smaller version. Um, I think it's a size six, super bulky, but listen, size six can mean so many things. So just, you know, take this with a grain of salt it, it just makes your project bigger or smaller if you use bigger or smaller yarn so this is the one that i have chosen and we are going to need quite a bit of yarn for the petal color and the main body color and then not too much for like the yellow of the face so just a little bit of this one but for the petals i've chosen to use i think it's called peach pink peach pink or sk25 and then for the body, there's like this light mint green. Um, it's called Baby Green, SK02. And then this one, which is the yellow face color, we are using Daffodil, SK05. So these are our three main colors that we're using. Okay, and the last bit of yarn that we need is some detail yarn, and I'm using Paintbox Simply DK. So this is a size three weight yarn, um, and I'm using a black and then a like a bright bubbly pink color. So this one is color 150, and I think it's called Bubblegum Pink. And then this one is 101, and it is called Pure Black. So these are just for the, the details. You can use whatever you want. Honestly, it's just for the little cheeks and the mouth. So we only need a very, very small bit of it. For some other things that we're gonna need, we are using a 6.0 millimeter hook. That is the only hook that we will need for this project. Of course, if you're using a smaller or bigger yarn, you might have to size up or side, size down. Um, I've decided to go quite tight with my tension just because I'm kind of playing around with it and seeing what I like. So I'm using quite tight tension with the 6.0 millimeter hook. So yours might turn out a little bit differently if you have a different tension than I do. And then I'm also going to be using glue with my safety eyes. So I'm using 12 millimeter safety eyes and then I'm just going to glue these on. I find if I use the backings with like chunky yarn, it tends to slip through anyways. I mean, you could use the backings and glue, but I just use literally fabric glue and that seems to hold just fine. Um, so those are my safety eyes and glue. We're also going to need some scissors, some pins for like pinning things into place a stitch marker and a needle um i'm using like a yarn needle um, and then we are going to need like heaps and heaps of polyester fiber fill stuffing like you need a lot for this project just because it's so big if you've decided to downsize and go like with a smaller yarn and hook size then you're not going to need as much but we need like way more than this it's just it's a huge project it needs a lot of stuffing Okay, so let's start with the petals. I'm choosing my petal color and then I'm going to make a slip knot and then chain two, one, two. And then I'm going to single crochet eight in the second chain from the hook right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and last one here, eight. Okay, now I'm going to take my stitch marker and mark the last stitch of the round. Okay, so we have like our little circle of eight here. You can count the stitches. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a little bit hard to, to count up here, but just do your best. And what we're gonna do is we are going to increase into every single stitch all the way around. So I'm gonna go into this first one. Sometimes it's helpful to count backwards to figure out exactly where your first one is because it's kind of confusing. It's not like in here. Sometimes it can just get a little bit hard to tell. So I'm going to put my crochet hook into there and put an increase into every single stitch all the way around. So that's another increase 
So I mentioned that I've been like playing around with tension sizes or tensions? Tension sizes? <laughs> okay. So I am trying to crochet very tight because I'm trying to get my stitches to line up a little bit better. And I've also already crocheted up the other petals. So I want it to match. So I am crocheting quite, quite tight, but you can just do what, whatever's comfortable for you. Okay, so at the end of this round, we should have a total of 16 stitches if you count them all up. So I'm gonna put my stitch marker back on my last stitch if I can. <laughs> oh my God, okay. Back on the last stitch. So this is 16 stitches all the way around. So for that was round one. Oh my god, I'm already, we've done one round and I'm already losing track of my rounds. So that was round one. Round two is going to be single crochet and then increase into the next stitch over. So in a set of two stitches, we are going to single crochet and then increase. And then we're gonna do the same pattern all the way around. So we'll go single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase. And we'll do that all the way back to the beginning here. So you should do it a total of eight times. Increase and then single crochet and then increase. And then single crochet and then increase and then single crochet and then increase and single crochet and then increase and then single crochet and then <laughs> increase so I'm just not used to crocheting this tight, so it's a little bit wonky and weird for me. And then increase. And then single crochet, and then you should end off on an increase stitch. So just like that. So at the end of this round, we should have 24 stitches because the last round we had 16, we increased by eight on this past round. So we should have 24 stitches. So you can go ahead and count those up if you would like. So for round three, we are going to single crochet three. So one, two, three, and then in the next stitch over, we will increase. So that will be a set of four, right? So we single crocheted three and then we increased into the fourth stitch. We're gonna do that pattern six times all the way around. So single crochet three, one, two, three, and then we're going to increase into that fourth stitch. Oh, okay, oh, I slipped a little bit there. <clears throat> And then we'll do it again, all the way back. Okay, another set, one, two, three, and then increase. One, two, oh, three, and then increase into our last stitch. So we've added six more stitches on here. So at the end of this round, we should have 30 stitches all the way around. If you want to go ahead and count them, you can definitely do that as well. Okay, so for round four through eight, so that's going to be five rounds, we are just going to straight single crochet, so one stitch per stitch um, all the way around. 
uh, for 30 stitches. We're gonna do that for five rounds. So rounds four through eight are just gonna be straight single crochet. They're just, I think I said, I think I said like just single crochet around like in five different ways. Like that's all you're doing. You're just doing, <laughs> trying to make it as clear as possible. Uh, so single crochet all the way around. So 30 stitches. And we're gonna do that for rounds four through eight. And that's five rounds total. <laughs> okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and crochet this independently by myself. So if you wanna pause here, I will meet you back when I'm done, okay? Okay, I'll show you how you can count them easily or hopefully, hopefully you can see. But all you have to do is start from your stitch marker or where you left off. And you're gonna kind of like go downwards and a little bit to the left you'll see like your stitches kind of line up a little bit and then you'll see like this weird one and this is where we did our last increase so when we did i think it was like single crochet three increase um this is our last increase stitch because we ended off on that increase so we're just going to count upwards from that based on like the bumps here so one two three four five and that is how I know I have five rounds. So for round, oh God, uh, I lost track. For round nine, we are going to single crochet eight and then do an invisible decrease. And we're gonna do that pattern uh, three times around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then to do an invisible decrease, we are going to take the front loops only of the next two stitches and pick them up on our crochet hook. We'll yarn over or un yonder, under, <laughs> and then pull through two, and then yarn under, pull through two. Um, Maybe I should specify and say that I'm doing the yarn under, yarn under method of single crochet. If you are going over top of your hook when you're like single crocheting, so if you go like this and then over top of your hook and then pull through, over top, pull through both, that's just yarn over. All I'm doing is picking underneath instead of over top of my hook. Does that make sense? All it does is it kind of changes the shape of the stitches and these ones are more like X stitches and then I call the other ones like croissants because they kind of look like croissants to me but I'm just doing yarn under so when I say like yarn under your hook you can yarn over just get it like over or under your hook whichever way you prefer to do it so we're gonna continue on we are going to single crochet eight again one two oh mm, three four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we are going to invisible decrease. So pick up the front loop only of the next two stitches, yarn under, pick up the loop, yarn under, pull through both. And then again, we are going to single crochet eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so we should have two stitches left, which is perfect because we are going to invisible decrease here. So we are going to pick up the front loops only of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through both. So at the end of round nine, <laughs> we should have 27 stitches left because we decreased by three and we had 30 in the previous round so we should have 27 stitches left if you want to go ahead and count you can totally do that now but for round 10 we are going to do something similar except we are going to single crochet seven instead of eight and then de decrease so one two three four five six seven and then we are going to decrease invisible decrease so picking up the front loops only of the next two stitches yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two 
then we're gonna do that again. So single crochet seven, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then invisible decrease. So front loops only, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then again, single crochet seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you should have two stitches left. Take off your marker, invisible decrease into the last two stitches. And then put your marker back. So for round 11, I'm not sure if you can see the pattern that we're starting to form, but we are decreasing by three each time. So at the end of this past round, at the end of round 10, we should have 24 stitches. And now moving on to round 11, we are going to single crochet six and then invisible decrease. Two, three, four, five, six, and then invisible decrease into the next two stitches. And then again, single crochet six. We're doing that three times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And in, uh, okay, <laughs> sometimes it gets a little hard to pick up that front loop. So invisible decrease. And then the third time, single crochet six, two, three, four, five, six, and then invisible decrease in your last two stitches. Go. Okay, so at the end of this round, you should have 21 stitches left. And for our final round, round 12, we are going to single crochet five and then invisible decrease. And we'll do that three times around. One, two, three, four, five and then invisible decrease. And then again, one, two, three, four, five, and then invisible decrease. And then again, one, two, three, four and five and then invisible decrease into the last two stitches here there we go so then at the end of this round you should have 18 stitches total and it will look a little like this so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to take my scissors and i'm gonna cut fairly decent sized piece uh, of yarn to sew in later and just pull it out of that loop and this isn't going to come undone anymore so I'm just going to kind of leave it like this you don't need to like tie it off or anything it just it just lives like this okay now you are going to make six petals total so you can just go back and play the petal pattern petal pattern over again um, and you should have six total petals okay so I will meet you back once you're done okay so these are my six petals I've tried to make sure that my tension is all the same but sometimes you know my tension's a little bit looser in some and tighter in others so just try and make sure your tension is all the same if you crocheted tightly in one of them make sure you crochet tightly in all of them just because you'll have some petals looking a little bit bigger or smaller depending on if you've loosened up or tightened up so these six petals we are going to put off to the side for now because we will pretty much stuff them and attach them on like at the end Okay, and then next thing, you need to make yourself a cup of tea because you deserve it. Or coffee or any kind of drink that you like. There's, there's a lot of instructions here, okay? And uh, you need something to sip on. Well, it's hot. I just made it. It's so hot. 
So now that the petals are done, I want to start working on the face or like the center of the flower. And to do that, we are going to make our slip knot. But instead of chaining two and then making a circle, we're going to kind of make like an oval. Um, and to do that, we are going to start off with like a starting chain. So we are going to chain eight. So one, two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, don't ask me why I yarn over for my chains or like... I don't like I don't know why I have no rationale to why I yarn over here and then when I start like single crocheting I yar yarn under literally don't know couldn't tell you <laughs> it, it, it's just the way that my brain works I just my hands want to do that so starting in the second chain from the hook just like we do our little like circular things we are going to put a single crochet there so this is kind of hard to visualize so this is our last chain that we made right here and we're just going to go down into the second and we are going to single crochet just into that top loop there okay so you see how their braids were just going into the top of the braid so that's one and then we're going to single crochet again two and then again three we're just going down that braid four five six so we've single crocheted six down and then there is one stitch left here this last piece right here and we are going to increase into this last stitch so we're gonna put two single crochets into that one okay now my like i'm already naturally starting to do this but if you are used to crocheting flat you might like turn it back this way and then go down this way but we're not going to do that we're just going to like if we were crocheting this way right we have it this way all we're going to do is flip it kind of upside down does that make sense so now we can start working down this side so this is the other half of the braid so we're gonna find our first stitch and I kind of like to pull this knot back and down because then that will reveal that first little bump here. So that is my first single crochet. We are gonna single crochet down six and then increase into the seventh. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this last one is going to be our increase. We should have eight stitches on either side, bringing us to a total of 16 stitches all the way around. So now we can start working within the round. Does that make sense? Like we've just gone down one side, up the other, and we've made like a circle, but it's kind of like an oval. So for round two, we are going to single crochet and then increase all the way around. So we should do that eight times total. So single crochet into the first stitch. If I can mush my like hook in there. So single crochet and then increase. And then single crochet and then increase. And we're just doing that combination of two stitches all the way around or eight times total. And then my last two stitches are going to be, of course, single crochet and then increase into the last stitch. So because we had 16 stitches prior 
and then we increase by eight, we should have 24 stitches total by the end of this round. Now for round three, we are going to single crochet two and then increase. This one's hard to get into. Single crochet two and then increase. And then we're gonna do that pattern all the way around. So single crochet two and then increase. And we should do that a total of eight times. So we should have like this oval shape starting to form a little bit more now. For round four, we are going to single crochet three this time. So one, two, three. And then we are going to increase into the fourth stitch. Okay, and we're gonna do that pattern eight times around. So one, two, three and then increase. We're just gonna keep doing that all the way around or eight times total. One, two, three. And then increase. And at the end of round four, you should have 40 stitches. So you can go ahead and count those up now. For round five, we are gonna be working in the back loop only, so B-L-O, um, all the way around. And this is gonna give us like a little ridge. Um, and I just find, I don't know, I kind of just like the look of the little ridge. It's like, it's like a separation of the, like the pollen on the flower versus like the petals. I don't know, you can choose to skip this. I also just find that it allows the, the piece to turn and work backwards. So it gives it like more of a sharper turn so it's not rounded. I don't, you know what? It's a little bit hard to explain, but once we get there, I'll kind of show you. So for 40 stitches all the way around, we are gonna not work into both loops. So if we were working in both loops, this is normally how we work. We go under both of those V stitches each time, right? We just like go under both of them. But when we work back loops, we consider this our front loop here and on this side, our back loop. So I'm just gonna go into the middle of that V and out the back and then I'm gonna single crochet and then you'll see this little little piece right right off the front here that is our front loop so we're gonna leave that alone and we're gonna go to the next stitch and work into the back loop again and just single crochet so you can see there's like this line starting to form that's exactly what we want and I'm just going to single crochet around in the back loops only every single time. Single crochet all the way around. This can kind of get a little bit finicky, especially if you're working quite tight. It's kind of hard to push through the stitches sometimes, but just work slowly all the way around. I am gonna meet you back at my stitch marker just cause um, watching someone stitch 40 times is kind of boring. So I will meet you back once I've gone all the way around in the back loop only back to my stitch marker. Okay, so I've worked my way all the way around in the back loop only and you can see that there's starting to be like this this little line 
kind of follows all the way around. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And it has like a tendency now to like start to move back. Like if this is the front of our piece, it starts to kind of push the piece around and kind of go towards the back, which uh, I kind of preferred when I was making the pattern. It just made it like, I don't know, a little bit easier to turn and make like the rest of the, the flower base. So now we are going to start to work in our other color. So you are going to take the color that you used for the petals. So I used the orange color and we are going to start off our round six with a color change. So to do a color change the way that I do my color changes is I put my crochet hook through the stitch yarn over and pick up the loop so there's two stitches or two loops on your hook and then all you're gonna do is lay the new yarn over top of your hook you don't even have to put a slip knot or anything and just pull it through two that's it like that's my color change congratulations you've color changed um just be be mindful that like this is loose right now so we aren't going to like pull it too hard just yet um, just kind of hold it in the back with with your finger here uh, until we've got a few more stitches so we are just going to single crochet around uh, until we get back to our stitch marker so this should be what do we say 40 stitches 40 stitches all the way around so I've dropped that that piece here and I'm just going to single crochet all the way back to the beginning Okay, so I am almost back to my stitch markers. I have crocheted 40 stitches all the way around. Um, and now we are gonna work on tying off our yellow yarn. So I am just going to single crochet into this first one and the second one. So this is gonna be the first two stitches of the next round, but I just do that because it's just easier and it doesn't pull the stitches as much when we tie. So I'm just gonna trim the yellow yarn here and all I'm gonna do is tie it to the starting of the orange yarn. And this just prevents it from untangling or untangling, unwinding. So this is the first two stitches of round seven done. And so for round seven through 11, so that's five rounds total, we are just gonna single crochet all the way around. So single crochet 40 each time. Um, I am going to do this part off screen and I will meet you back once I have five rounds done. So we should be at round 11, okay? I will be right back. So we've done our five rounds of single crochet here. Um, if you want to count, just to make sure that you've got the right number, you can count from the top or the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we had that color changing round where we color changed on the first stitch and then we finished. So, and then we did the five uh, rounds of single crochet. So now we're going to start decreasing. So round 12, we're going to start our decrease. And we are going to start off with an invisible decrease into the first stitch here. So that's our first stitch. And then we are going to single crochet into the next stitch. And then we are going to invisible decrease again. Okay. And then we are going to single crochet. And then invisible decrease again. So we've just done this pattern of decrease, single crochet, decrease, single crochet, decrease, and then we are going to single crochet eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is our eight. And then we are going to single crochet and then decrease and we're going to do that pattern four times. So single crochet, decrease, single crochet, decrease. And we're doing invisible decreases every single time. And then single crochet, decrease. 
And then one more single crochet and decrease. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have the four. So one, two, three, four, you can kind of see just barely you can kind of point them out because they look a little bit funky and compared to our normal single crochets but one two three four invisible decreases and then we are going to single crochet nine one two three four five oops five six seven my ball of yarn is chasing me. Eight. And nine. So after the nine stitches, we are going to invisible decrease. And then for the last stitch, we are just gonna single crochet. So <laughs> this, this part looks a little bit weird, but it'll all straighten out once we stuff. But what I'm trying to get you guys to do is to try and decrease over on these sides and not decrease on these flat straights. So it'll kind of oval back down again. Does that make sense? So if we're just doing our decreases over here, then we start to turn inwards and close off this way. And then the flats will stay flat. Does that make sense? So. For round 13, we're gonna do something similar. We're gonna kind of side heavy our decreases. And we are going to start off with a decrease. We're gonna do three invisible decreases in a row. So one, two, three. So invisible decrease, invisible decrease, invisible decrease to start. That's the first three stitches. And then we are going to single crochet eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we are going to invisible decrease four times. So just gonna pick up the front loops only of the next two stitches front loops only next two stitches front loop only and last invisible decrease here front loops only next two stitches okay so you can see it's really starting to curve in here and we are going to single crochet eight now So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we should have two stitches left, which we are going to invisible decrease them together. One more invisible decrease at the end. Okay, so at the end of round 13, you should have 24 stitches. Now moving on to round 14, we are going to start off by decreasing times three again. So invisible decrease, invisible decrease, and invisible decrease. So invisible decrease times three. And then we are going to single crochet four, so one, two, three, and four. And then we are going to invisible decrease times four. So invisible decrease four times. And the next eight stitches, one, two, three, and last one, four. And then we are going to single crochet four. One, two, three, four. And then we are going to invisible decrease our last two stitches together. So at the end of this round, you should have 16. 
I'm gonna place my stitch marker here and pull up this loop because I'm gonna work on stuffing now. So I use quite a bit of stuffing just because I like to make sure everything's nice and firm. Um, and it also helps everything kind of stand up a little bit better. So I'm gonna grab some stuffing and we are gonna start just throwing that in there. So I like to kind of place mine or my, my stuffing kind of flatter at the face area. So make like a lining of like a flat piece of stuffing and then, and then you can kind of just start throwing it in. This also helps like that front part of the face kind of even out. You know how there were like these two little, little bumps kind of bulging? This is just going to push those pieces out and make sure it's nice and even. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here because we are still gonna have another opportunity for stuffing after round 15. And round 15, we are just going to decrease in like invisible decrease all the way around. So we should have 16 stitches left. We are decreasing eight times and then we should end up with eight stitches at the end. So we're just gonna invisible decrease like all the way. Sometimes these are hard to get into. Okay, two more. Going around the curves are kind of hard, but... Just try and be patient. <laughs> Unlike me, who's like almost sweating trying to get these stitches in. I'm just so not used to stitching so tight, so these are usually easier for me to get into, but... You know, we all struggle. So I'm gonna take a little bit extra yarn and just like, not that much. You probably don't even need this much. I'm just gonna cut it and um, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time with a little bit more stuffing just to fill out the rest of it and then we'll work on closing it off. If you have any like bits of like fluff or pieces that come off of, of your yarn while you're your crocheting, you can just use that for stuffing too. I always think like, oh, I'm done. And then I find more room to stuff and I'm like, okay, well, a little bit extra. Okay, so now we are gonna take our little, or I guess our big yarn needle and thread that on. And then we are gonna take the front loops only this time. Remember how we distinguish between front loops and back loops? We're gonna pick up the front loop only. So I'll try and get nice and close in here, but it's still hard to see. We have both loops right here and we are just gonna pick up the front loop right here. And we are just gonna sew with our little needle and I'm gonna pull tight on each sew. We're gonna do, we're gonna pick up like the, the remaining eight stitches here. make sure that you tighten along the way because it's really difficult to to tighten at the end uh, because your yarn will break <laughs> it'll just crack and just that's it um, so sometimes I like to put a little like final stitch um, and I'll make like a little knot somewhere along here um, I don't find it completely necessary but I don't know 
makes me feel better. And then I'm going to stick my yarn needle through like that hole that we just closed up and kind of out the side here. Okay, now I'm going to trim my yarn. And then we can use this for stuffing later. And now we have kind of a face. <laughs> I like to put in my facial features at the end because then I can really determine where they're gonna go. But if you prefer to like have your um, little back pieces, back pieces? safety eye backings um, instead you can do that before you stuff and close up and we are gonna put this piece off to the side again okay so this is the biggest part of this project well maybe yeah the biggest part this is the most crocheting that we'll do for this project and we are going to be working on the body to start the body we are going to start with our slip knot and then our chain two and then we're going to single crochet eight into the second chain from the hook one two three <clears throat> four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this is our base starting point. And we're gonna take our stitch marker, of course, and mark our last stitch. And for round one, we are going to increase into every single stitch. So we will increase times eight. So every single stitch, we are going to put two single crochets to make an increase. And then at the end of the round, we should have 16 stitches total. And then the last one will have 16 stitches total. Okay, and then you put your stitch marker back. Round two is gonna be similar. You'll start to notice like a pattern start to form. So our first round is increase, and then our second round will be single crochet increase, and you'll repeat that eight times. And then the third round will be single crochet two increase and repeat that eight times around. And then the next round will be single crochet three and then increase, and do that eight times around. And then we're gonna keep on going until we get to single crochet five increase and doing that around eight times. And then we're gonna crochet a heck of a lot of rounds. Okay, so round one was increase all the way around. Round two is single crochet and then increase. And you're gonna do that pattern all the way around. So single crochet and then increase and then single crochet and then increase. Okay, so this is our last stitch. Our last stitch is an increase. And then we should have 24 stitches at the end of this round. So for round three, we are going to single crochet two. Oh, I'm slipping. Single crochet two and then increase. And we're gonna do that pattern all the way around or eight times total. So single crochet one, single crochet two, and then increase. And again. Okay, and then going on to my last set, single crochet one, single crochet two, and then last one, we increase. So we should have 32 stitches at the end of this round. For round four, we are going to single crochet three. One, two, 
three, and then we're gonna increase into the fourth one. So you can start to see that our increases are all lining up on top of each other, and then we're gonna eventually get like this octagon starting to form. You can kind of see the sides of it forming now. That's totally fine. It's not really gonna show up at the end of the piece. But for this round, round four, we are gonna single crochet three and then increase into the fourth one. So I'll show you again. So one, two, three, and then we will increase into the fourth. So we're gonna do that all the way around back to our stitch marker or eight times total. Okay, so I finished up round uh, four. <laughs> I'm losing track. Finished up round four and round four has 40 stitches at the end of it. You can really see this octagon starting to form. Uh, round five will be single crochet four. So one, two, three, four. And then in the fifth stitch, we are going to increase. And then we're gonna repeat this pattern of single crochet four and then increase all the way around or eight times total. And at the end of uh, round five, we should have 48 stitches because we're adding eight stitches. Okay, so moving on to round six. Round six will be single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five and then increase into the sixth one. And we're gonna do that pattern of single crochet five and then increase all the way around or eight times around total. And we should have uh, 54 stitches at the end of this round. So I will meet you back at my stitch marker again. Okay, so just finished up round six. Uh, I have 54 stitches now and you're not gonna like me when I say this, but you're gonna do eight rounds of straight single crochet, 54 stitches each time. So that will take care of round seven through 14. I know it's a lot. <laughs> uh, if you have to do this over a couple of days, do it over a couple of days, but 54 stitches around. We're not increasing or decreasing, just 54 stitches and we're gonna do eight rounds of 54 stitches each. So once I am done round 14, I will meet you back and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> okay, give this video a pause or come back to it if you need a break and I will see you once you are at, or once you're finished round 14. Okay, so I've done my eight rounds of straight single crochet. So we are finished round 14 and we're going on to round 15. Um, you can count your rows how we did it before. So finding that last um, increase stitch because we, we have our, our last stitch marker over here and then we can follow our stitches downward, finding that last increase stitch looks a little bit weirder than the other stitches and then counting upwards from that one two three four five six seven eight so eight rounds complete um yeah if you need a break take a break i know i've said it but like this is a lot of stitches and especially if your your wrist gets sore don't don't push it um but for round 15 we are going to start decreasing and we are going to do single crochet five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to invisible decrease. So invisible decrease by picking up the front loop only of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And you're going to do this combination of single crocheting five and then invisible decrease. You're going to do that eight times all the way around and back to the stitch marker. So you should end off with an invisible decrease for the last two stitches. And then you should have 48 stitches at the end of the round. So I'm just gonna go along and do that and I will meet you back at my stitch marker. Okay, so I've gone all the way around and I have 48 stitches here. So round 16, 
um, we are going to single crochet all the way around and we're going to do that for four rounds. So round 16, 17, 18 and 19 are going to be straight single crochet. So you will have 48 stitches at the end of each round and I will meet you back when we are at 16, 17, 18, 19, <laughs> back at round 19. Okay, just finished up the four rounds of single crochet. So um, there's my last decrease right here. It's that funky stitch. And then one, two, three, four. And now we can move on to round 20. And round 20 is gonna be another decrease row. So we are gonna work one, two, three, four single crochets. And then we are going to invisible decrease in the next two. So we are going to work this pattern of sing single crochet four and then invisible decrease. And we're going to do that around um, or eight times total. And then at the end of round 20, we should have 40 stitches. So I'm going to pause here and I will meet you back at my stitch marker. For rounds 21 and 22, we are going to single crochet all the way around. So single crocheting 40 stitches each time for two rounds. So I am gonna work on those two rounds of just straight single crochet and then I will meet you back at my stitch marker. So we are finally in the home stretch. Round 23 is going to be single crochet three and then invisible decrease and we are gonna do that eight times around. So single crochet three, invisible decrease so we'll do that all the way around one two three and then invisible decrease and then we'll have 32 stitches at the end of this round and round 24 is just going to be single crocheting all the way around so single crocheting those 32 stitches and okay last stitch here so we still have 32 stitches at the end of this round and round 25, our last round, we are going to single crochet two and then decrease or invisible decrease. So invisible decrease, single crochet two and then invisible decrease. And we're gonna do that all the way around. One, two, and then invisible decrease. Two, and lastly, invisible decrease. Okay, that's it. So we'll have uh, 24 stitches at the end of this round. I'm gonna pull up quite a long loop and I am going to cut and then pull out that loop. Jeez. Okay, so we have our thread for sewing in later and now we are going to stuff the piece. So. We are gonna stuff this quite firmly. I like to, you know, just like I did with the face, just to pop out any weird edges or, or anything like that. And it also gives a little bit more support. So I'm gonna go ahead and stuff that. So I have kind of left a little bit of room at the top here because we're gonna be sewing this part in. And I find if it's like overflowing with stuffing, it just, it just gets in the way <laughs> and then it pulls out the side. Um, so I don't really want any stuffing showing out the side. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it a little bit gently stuffed here. And then um, when we attach the head to the body, then I will stuff some extra in there. Okay, so we are gonna work on the arms next. So we're gonna take the same green color and we are going to make our slip knot and chain two. And then we are going to single crochet eight in the second chain from the hook here. So just like we've started off everything else, we're going to single crochet eight here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm going to take my stitch marker and put it on the last stitch here. Now for round one, we are going to just increase into every single stitch. So increase times eight, 
and then we should have 16 stitches at the end. Okay, 13 and 14 and last one 15 16 in here 15 16 okay so now for the next seven rounds um, we are going to single crochet 16 so seven rounds of single crocheting all the way around 16 stitches a piece and I will meet you once I'm done so I have done the seven rounds and then I cut the yarn leaving, I don't know, maybe just, eh, I don't even know how, is that a foot, a foot and a half maybe for sewing in? I tend to give myself a little extra yarn for sewing in, but we're just going to be sewing in each of these uh, stitches at the end. Um, so once you've done one arm, you are going to do the exact same pattern again for the arms and you're going to make a second one to match. Um, and then once we're done that, we are going to move on to the legs. So the legs are done in pretty much the same way. We are going to start with a slip knot, and then we are going to do our chain two, and then single crochet eight in second chain from hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm gonna throw my stitch marker on, and then we are going to, oh my God, I can't, I can't get it on there. Okay, and then we are going to start in the first stitch, we are going to increase, and we are going to increase times eight. So increase into every single stitch all the way back to our stitch marker. Okay, and at the end of this round, we will have 16 stitches. So the next part that we're gonna do is we are going to single crochet around for five rounds this time. So I will meet you back at the end once we've done um, five rounds of single crocheting, 16 in each round. Um, so yeah, I'll be right back. So I have finished up my five rounds of straight single crochet and then I've cut the yarn leaving about the same as last time um, of yarn for sewing in because we'll be sewing in each of these stitches. And then once you're done this leg, you can make a second one to match. And at this point in time, if you've done both of your legs, we should have all of the pieces that we need for actually sewing our stuff together. So recommended to take a break at this time and then come back um, just because you know you've done a lot of crocheting but if you're feeling good we can whip along to the next part where we're going to attach all of our pe pieces people i almost said people um we <laughs> will be okay let's just let's just start sewing stuff in so from here we are going to take the petals and we are going to stuff them so you can stuff them as firmly or as softly as you want i just like them to stand upright so i give them a little bit of a stuff um not as firm as like all of the other pieces but just kind of enough so it like has structure to it um and we're gonna do that with all all six of our petals so i'm just gonna slowly like work along <laughs> stuffing each one of these pieces and trying to like make them <laughs> all the same in terms of squish factor so i am going to take care of that and i will be right back Okay, so I've just placed in these eyes as just kind of like a marker to figure out like the front of the face and where we're going to be putting things. So after I've stuffed all of my petals, I'm going to try and just place them, just place them around so that there's enough space for all of my petals 
because I don't want to get into the scenario that we're like sewing in and then there's like this big gap or maybe not enough space. So I'm taking the, ouch, uh, I poked myself. I'm taking the yarn on the back side of the piece because I know this ridge is going to be a little bit taller than this ridge, which is kind of what I want. And I'm just going to go around, I'm going to like pin them. This is kind of tricky because uh, pins, especially pins that are this small, are not going to want to stay. Um, but I'm going to just try my best and I'm lining it up with this color change here. So now I'm taking the yarn piece in the back of the next one over and I'm going to just, I'm just going to try and make them all fit. That's, that's it. And this is going to take a little bit of patience and you don't have to do it absolutely perfectly. You don't have to use a lot of pins if it tends to hold, but just so that we can have enough space. Just need enough space. Okay, so that looks pretty good. <laughs> so now I'm gonna try and like take off the ones that I can without disrupting the other ones, but still having enough space to like put in, uh, stitch it in. Does that make <laughs> so I'm gonna start by stitching this one in and I'm gonna do that by taking off these two. And this is kind of heartbreaking because you just spent so much time putting them all in but I'm gonna try my best to sew this one in without these ones falling off because I need like, I need some sort of guide for place holding. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the yarn tail here and then I'm gonna zoom you in so you guys can see what the heck I'm talking about. And then I'm gonna start by like, because the yarn's coming from the petal, Oh, you can't see. Because the yarn's coming from the petal, I'm gonna go into the piece and out right next door. And then you'll just pull that through. And then you're gonna go and find the next stitch over on the petal, just like that, and pull that through. And then you're gonna go down into the spot that you came out of when we like were coming, you know, we went over to the side and then up. You want to go into the same spot that you came out of. And then we're going to just like repeat this, this pattern, sewing each stitch from the petal in. And then I'm going to line up the front of my petal with the front of this, this color change. Does that make sense? So you see how I'm going like down. Oh, whoops. I need to go into the petal first. So into the petal and then I'm going to go down and over where the color change is. Basically just stitch it in. Just do your best to stitch it in. And if you miss a stitch, you know, the world's not gonna end. It's fine. It's not gonna completely come out. It'll be okay. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see the overall what I'm what I'm trying to get across here. doing your best to not like pull these stitches any further over like that's why we've we've kind of like created a spot for them we don't want to pull them over too far because that's where the other half is gonna go
And then before we completely sew it up, you'll have like this tiny little hole and I'm just gonna throw a little bit more stuffing just to make sure that the base of it is nicely supported um, and then you don't have like a wobbly wobbly base so I'm just gonna finish off sewing and then we'll make a knot at the end and then we will finish it off okay so last stitch here on the last stitch, I am going to make a little loop, so not pull all the way through. I'm gonna hold that loop, and I'm going to put my needle through. And you can see how like bare my yarn is getting because of all of the stitching we're doing. And then I'm gonna take the yarn and push through the same spot, and then out the back. And if you feel confident, you can absolutely cut that yarn here. Um, I have found it super helpful to just leave it until the very end, because sometimes, very rarely, especially with this kind of yarn, but sometimes I'll go back and pull it out and adjust a few stitches, but because this yarn is very difficult with sewing in, um, I tend not to do that. So if you want, you can cut it, but just make sure you have enough space. Planning is key here. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put this second one in and move this one off, okay? So we're putting the second one back in and then I'll move this off so I have space to, to sew in. Okie doke. Okay, so here is what we have. We have all of our flower petals sewn in and I have just trimmed off the excess on the back and just cleaned up all of the, the fluff. So now we are gonna work on the face because it's easier to do that when it's flat. And I'm gonna take my safety eyes and just kind of place them in this like line that we started out with. Just as like a marking, you don't, I, I'm not gonna like glue them in just yet but just to like mark the spot that I want them. And I'm gonna kind of like move them around up and down until I find what I like. Because sometimes like this looks a little bit wonky. I think the best spot for it is probably there. Then we're gonna take our yarn that's like the smaller yarn, the DK weight yarn, and we are gonna work on the mouth and the cheeks. I'm not gonna, like I said, not gonna glue these in just yet, but I'm gonna take a long piece of black and then a nice long piece of pink. So for the cheeks, I'm gonna kind of do them just kind of around the eye area on either side. And I'm gonna do like a couple of wraps of those. Um, I'm not too worried about sewing these in just just because like I don't find that it goes anywhere but if you're gonna like rough around with them I don't know then you might want to tie them down but I'm gonna go right here for the cheek and I'm just gonna pull out a nice big strand and then go one stitch outwards and back to where I came out of and then I'm just gonna do like two, two or three little loops around just to cover up any yellow. And then I'm gonna work my way down into the piece and all the way across to like the same area that 
is on the other side. So sometimes it's difficult to match. But I think we need to go up a little bit here. It's hard to because I'm like, I'm looking at it from an angle while you guys are looking at it top down. But looking at it top down is definitely easier. So I'm just doing the same thing on this side as well. And then I'm going to bring it on down. And I'm just gonna try and make sure that it's nice and even. And then I think like if you wanted, I've never actually done this, but if you want, you can definitely bring it out the same hole as you like came into on the other side of the, the, the yarn. Just make sure that they're coming out the same hole. And then I think, I think you can, like I've seen people do this in which they like tie it here. Um, I've never done this before, but in the sake of like security, I guess. I'm just gonna tie it in and then I'm gonna cut this yarn because it's way too long and then I'm gonna try and like sew both of these into the piece without moving around too much of my stuff so I'm gonna bring it to the back I guess I guess that works eh you can hardly see it and then I'll trim these now to the hardest part which is the mouth this was so hard for me to get right when i did it the first time took so many tries and that's what's hard like this is yellow so it's gonna like stain if i if i do too many but i'm gonna like come out this middle line on the left hand side about like i don't know two stitches away and then two stitches away over here, I'm gonna go back down in, and then I'm gonna kinda just come out a little further down, right in the middle, and then try and catch this piece here. And then go back into the same spot that I came out of here. Let's see if I can bring it back out, right where that black yarn starts. see so you can see that you know it's not quite even it's very close but it's not quite even so I'm gonna try and pluck this side out uh, actually it might be this is the tricky part I mess around with this a lot to try and get it right I think I'm gonna go with that. Actually, that was pretty uh, pretty good for a first attempt. I'm just gonna kind of like move, move the uh, mouth with the, the little needle here to try and like put it into the, the right smile configuration. Okay, yep, yeah, that works. I don't know how I did it right on the first try. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Oh wow, I learned a new technique. Learning things. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here in which I tie both ends together and then sew it through. Trim this because it's easier to put into the needle and then straight down oh I almost lost the needle okay yeah that actually works well and then I'm just gonna trim this little guy and then those are scraps just tuck this tuck that away okay that actually worked out really well now I'm gonna grab the glue I'm just gonna pull these out and it should like leave a little hole from where the, that you had them, that like where you put them in. It should leave like a little 
a little hole. <sighs> I had this right side up, so now it's like, <sighs> I don't have any of the glue at the bottom. Okay. And then I'm just gonna put like a small bead of glue right in that hole and then push this down into it. Same thing on the other side. We're gonna take that out, put a small bead into that hole and then push this down into it. So I find that enough to keep it in place. I think you could use super glue too. Um, I tend not to use the backings when I'm using plush yarn just cause it like, I don't know. It like comes out quite a bit and it also like pushes it too deep down. I don't know. I've just started using glue and it's a whole lot easier <laughs> and you can do it at the end. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and we are going to practice some patience and let it dry before we sew the body into the head. Okay, so we have been patient and we've waited for this to dry and now we can start putting the flower onto the body. So I have this little yarn tail that's coming off of this side and I'm essentially going to like put it at the bottom between the like the bottom point but the bottom between these two right here I don't even know how to describe but like right here we're gonna get it as close down as possible because we don't want it straight on we want it on an angle here and then we'll like mush this into place once we you know once we have it all fit on so I'm gonna take my yarn needle again and thread that on and then I'm gonna position it so that that yarn is like right as close as I can to this bottom here right in between there is where I'm gonna start and unfortunately there's like no exact method to like how you place this but I'm gonna just try and get as close as I can to these petals and then try and like just work all the way around in a circle without pulling it too far up but it really depends on where your like where your your petals are and I don't know, where your stitches are so it's just kind of I'm just gonna start sewing it in wherever it fits best. So I'm just gonna constantly move it around and try and figure out the best spots. So I'm just coming around back to the last couple of stitches and I'm gonna again get as close to the petals as possible. Okay, but before I finish up, I'm gonna stuff and make sure that he's got a non-wobbly neck. last little bit and I think I'm gonna try cutting the yarn here because I'm losing so much fiber it's getting hard to pull through okay this part is kind of tricky because everything's in the way so you're just gonna try and push everything out of the way as you sew through 
and I'm just following along where that petal seam is. Just going back to the beginning just like a couple more stitches my yarns kind of falling apart but that's okay we're literally almost there okay one more last stitch and on this last stitch I'm gonna make a little loop and make a knot And then push this string back through the piece and like out somewhere. I don't think it really matters where. Ooh. All right, now this is how I cheat. And I just mush the body into the position that I want. So if I want the flower to be like a little more straight, then I kind of mush it into place. So. You're left with kind of a weirdly like, I don't know, like a teardrop shape body. And then once you're happy and make and you've made sure that you like where everything is, you can trim that yarn. And I think we're good. Okay, we are almost done. <laughs> we're just gonna have to add the arms and the legs now. Okay, so next we are gonna be working on putting the arms and the legs on so this is gonna start getting a little bit tricky because everything's so big and in the way but let's start with the arms the arms are the longer ones or the bigger ones um, and we're gonna be putting them kind of so that they're poking out underneath the flower petals so just enough so that you can like see them when your little guy is standing up. Um, I like to kind of pick up and kind of place and see. And I'm using this um, string as like a guide to get as close as I can to here. And that's where I'm gonna be placing like this string and then sewing it in. So this is gonna be a little bit tricky to show you, um, but we are gonna start by stuffing a little bit. And then I'm gonna take uh, my yarn needle and I'm just gonna work on sewing it in. <laughs> I'm just gonna go around in a circle and trying to like get it right up against there and then checking to make sure that I, I like the spot of it. So a little, little bit difficult to show you, but hopefully you guys get the idea. And then before we completely sew it up, I'm going to stuff a little extra just to give it some extra oomph. Okay, now that I have a couple stitches left, I'm gonna take some more stuffing and stuff the rest in. Okay, then we're just seaming up the rest and then I'm going to make a little knot at the end. So last stitch here, I'm gonna hold that loop, if I can see it, <laughs> and then put my needle through, make a little knot there. All of the yarn is like slipping away. And that's not good. Okay, that's fine. Oh, just barely made it. You can see it's like shredding. And then I'm just gonna pull it through just to hide the yarn tail elsewhere. 
So now you've got a little arm sticking out and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna kind of match it on the other side and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've sewn on my two arms and I'm just gonna trim those yarn tails at the back in the front here. Trying not to actually cut the piece. Okay, we got the arms, great. Okay, so now we are gonna work on the legs. I think the legs are a little bit trickier to show you because this massive head is in the way. Um, but basically, I'm gonna mush it until I like the way that the flower sits. Um, so it kind of looks like this right now on the side. And then I'm going to place the feet so it's gonna be at the bottom of, like it's gonna be supporting it standing up, right? Because if they're too high, then it'll fall over. If they're too low, it'll prop them up further. So I'm going to kind of, I think this one's personal preference too. If you want them standing upright, you put the legs lower down. If you want them bending forward more, you put the legs further up. I'm going to put it more in line with the two flower petals. And if you want, you can, you know, do the same thing where we stuff or because they're so small, I'm just going to stuff them at the end. Um, and you can also pin them just to make sure that you are, you know, in line with each other. But I'm just going to guess because I'm just going to use the lines on the piece as basically markers. So as long as I have this in the right spot, then I'm just going to wing it. Now we just have to trim. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we're good there. Just going to trim. <laughs> okay, you're done. Let's uh, let's zoom out so you can get a better look. So hopefully you've made it through and hopefully you like this pattern. I really like the concept of it. I think he's super cute and hopefully you guys can make a whole garden's worth of lazy daisies and uh, it brings you a little bit of joy. So I recently passed. 20k subscribers on youtube which is kind of weird i know it has a lot to do with the two patterns that are just like really popular on my channel which is like the coffee cup pattern and then also the loaf cat pattern which are which are patterns that i'm super proud of um obviously i have come some way in terms of filming and trying to like make things more understandable i still have the comments of like zoom in too fast i'm really trying to make that better um in terms of videos going forward however i can't like i'm not gonna go back i'm not going back to the old patterns and re-uploading i'm just trying to like be better going forward so hopefully you guys can see that in terms of the videos coming out and um it really does mean a lot to me that you guys follow the channel that you are crafting the things that i'm making and um you know, I I have every opportunity to just make this a paid pattern. Um, I don't know, through like, there's people that do it through Patreon. There's people that just do it through paid patterns on Ribbler, Ravelry, Etsy, that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I really want to make my patterns more accessible to people. And seeing you guys make my stuff and make my patterns is like so rewarding to me. So... I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with the paid patterns. I still have paid patterns available, uh, some through Etsy, but if you're interested in supporting me through my paid patterns, definitely do that. If you're interested in supporting me through my free patterns, YouTube here is a great way to do that. Of course, like you can do that through subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing, all that kind of stuff, and um, just crafting and showing me on social media. That'd be great. Um, but anyways, <laughs> I... I'm going to save some of my blabbering for Twitch. Um, I have gotten the courage to start streaming on Twitch again. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I used to stream all the time and now, now it's very hard for me to like do it. But I don't know. It, I'm just doing what makes me feel good. And giving you guys this pattern 
uh, makes me feel good. <laughs> Anyways, um, hopefully you guys like these two little lazy daisies and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>